Good morning, everybody. Welcome. 30th of May. Uh, Tom and Sarah at Outlook.com. That's how to get a hold of me. Um, <clears throat> if you want to give into the ministry, I can send you the links. Uh, they're also in the description uh, on my YouTube channel. Um, go ahead, like, comment, subscribe, and share to these videos. That's a way that you can help. I want to tell you about this book, Experiencing the Depths of Jesus Christ. Uh, this little subtitle is one of the greatest Christian writings of all time, and I believe it is so. She makes the gospel and your life, your daily life, so simple. The Christian life is so simple, and we just have to walk in that. All right, next thing is um, SOS, a 50-day journey into the heart of God. I want to thank all those people that had um, commented that they wanted the book. I can only give one away, and I apologize. Uh, not sure I don't. But uh, this book here, SOS, A 50-Day Journey into the Heart of God. It's a devotional geared to 5 to 10 minutes a day. Um, you can get this book from Breakdown to Breakthrough, My Journey to Soul Health. Uh, the Bible says that uh, he restores my soul, and we will find rest for our souls. And that's what that book is about. You can get both of these books from me to, uh, by a donation of $20 or more. And you can get both of these books from me, Tom and Sarah at Outlook.com. So I want to thank you today for joining me. I, I love Song of Songs. We are there today in um, specifically verse 6 of chapter 1. Um, I am never in a hurry to teach. Uh, to, to um, I'm not in a hurry to get out of Song of Songs. I love this uh, book. Um, and then so we'll see how far we get with it. Maybe we'll get to verse 8 um, for sure. Uh, maybe we'll get further. I don't know. Um, yesterday we talked about how she feels dark and unlovely. And he says, yet you're so lovely. So this continues. She, she looks at her friends after she's talking to Jesus, after she's talking to the king. And uh, she says to the, her friends, please don't stare in scorn because of my dark and sinful ways. All right, don't, don't look at me. Um, in through the eyes of what they can see. Uh, a lot of people today, they look at you in scorn uh, based upon your life, what you, uh, what you look like with, through the eyes of religion. And, and, we, and we can't do that. So she says, please don't look and stare in scorn because of my dark and sinful ways. My angry brothers quarreled with me and appointed me guardian of their ministry vineyards. Yet I have not tended my vineyard within. Won't you tell me, lover of my soul, where do you feed your flock? Where do you lead your beloved ones to rest in the heat of the day? For I wish to be wrapped all around you as I wander among the flocks of your shepherds. It is you I long for with no veil between us. And then he says to her, listen, my radiant one. If you ever lose sight of me, just follow in my footsteps where I lead my lovers. Come with your burdens and cares. Come to the place near the sanctuary of my shepherds. My dearest one, let me tell you how I see you. You are so thrilling to me. To gaze upon you is like looking at one of Pharaoh's finest horses, a strong, regal steed pulling his royal chariot. Your tender cheeks are aglow, your earrings and gem-laden necklaces set them ablaze. We will enhance your beauty, encircling you with our golden reins of love. You will be marked with our redeeming grace. We'll stop there for a second. I, I hope to get there. Anyway, so many, many times we have people staring at us through their lenses of shame. God never looks at us in shame. He never looks at us uh, with the eyes of shame. He always looks at us 
with the eyes uh, covered with the blood of Jesus and he sees us as him. He loves us. He cares about us. Uh, but people, you know, the Bible says that man looks on the outside, but God looks at the heart. I had a pastor one time tell me, um, I, I, you know, I've got to apologize. I'm, I've been really thirsty the last couple of days. But um, I had a pastor one time tell me, God looks at the heart, but man looks at the outside. So you have to dress right and stuff. And then so many people looked in scorn at my life throughout. You know, because uh, I, you know, I just dressed casual. I mean, there are times I wish, I mean, I did like to dress up, but specifically this time, these times, you know, I, I just more casual. It's, it's just how I am. So she says, don't stare in scorn. People stare in scorn at you. Understand that. They will. But God doesn't do that. And then she says this, and, and, and a lot of us have these situations. And I want to get into this. My angry brothers quarreled with me and appointed me guardian of their ministry vineyards. It, 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 it's, it's something that I want to talk about um, because a lot of times people will require you, especially narcissistic people, um, controlling people, will have you um, look at them and take care of their stuff. And take the time away from you being able to take care of your stuff. All right. My angry brothers quarreled with me and appointed me guardian of their ministry vineyards. And yet I've not tended my vineyard within. You can't negate. You can't push aside your, um, how, how do I say it? You can't push aside uh, tending to your heart. That's what this book is all about. I spent many days worrying about other things and other people, making sure they were okay. I never took care of me. And you have to do that. And I'm not talking about taking care of you selfishly, but taking care of my heart and making sure that I am uh, fine and I'm spending time with the Lord. That's how you tend your vineyard within, by spending time with him, by loving him, by caring uh, for you, by allowing him to minister life to you. And I've shared this, and I believe that, um, you know, I believe that I'm on a forward progress to having a, a personal revival. I believe that that's where revival, corporate revival starts personally. And um, and then so what I started to do was tend my own vineyard. And a lot of people got really upset at that. Oh, you're just lazy. No, I'm just tending my vineyard. I want to be who God wants me to be. I don't want to be who you want me to be. I want to be who God wants me to be. I'm telling you, take care of your own heart. Take care of your own emotions. Back in the day, we used to have this thing. Oh, he's burning the wick at both ends. He's burning the candle at both ends. He's going to burn out. Take care of who you are in him. And then worry about somebody else. And then she knows at this point, how to do that, how to take care of her own vineyard. She says, won't you tell me, lover of my soul, where do you feed your flock? Where do you feed your flock? Where do you lead your beloved ones? Where do you lead them so that they can rest in the heat of the day? Now, here in Reading, we have some really hot days. Where do you lead me to, you know, where, where can I go? And God is telling us, you know, uh, and, he'll, and he'll, we'll get into it in a second. She says this, where do you leave? That's where to go. 
the biggest question here, in order to tend your heart. First, she recognizes that he is the lover of her soul. I love that song, Jesus, lover of my soul. Uh, take me to your bosom and let me lie there. This is what you have to come to. You have to come to the place where you can say, tell me, lover of my soul, where do you feed your flock? Where do you lead your beloved ones so I can rest? I want to rest. Where do you go? And then she says, for I wish to be wrapped all around you as I wander among the flocks of your shepherds. As, as it is you I long for with no veil between us. This 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 word uh, is ata, which means to wrap. They use uh, the the uh, the Aramaic uses the word to wander. I want to wrap around you, and uh, as I as I wander in these flocks, as I go between them, it is you I long for with no veil between us. You don't want a veil between you and the Lord. In fact, when Jesus died, he tore the veil. There's no pretensions, nothing. He just loves you and he cares about you. If you are hurting in your heart, forget the needs and stop being so empathetic at your brothers and come back to take care of you. You can't give somebody something you don't have. If you don't have soul health, you can't give somebody soul health. Many times people will say, Tom, I want, I want a double portion of what you have. And I keep saying, I want to have double portion of what I have. I can only give you what I have. And I love Jesus. That's all I can give you. I can give you Jesus. I have him. In verse 8, he responds to her and says, listen, my radiant one. Again, she's struggling, but he says that she's the radiant one. If you ever lose sight of me, and we lose sight of God sometimes in the midst of crises and and anxieties. He says, just follow the footsteps, my footsteps where I lead my lovers. You know, just, just imagine God having footprints. And what are God's footprints? Where are they? You can find them in the word. That's where the Bible is the way to find his footsteps, where he leads his lovers. And then he says again, like Matthew 28, or Matthew 11, come with your burdens and cares. Come to the place near the sanctuary of my shepherds. Or, um, you know, graze, graze your flock at the tents of my shepherds. It just, it's a metaphor that speaks to her responsibility. But don't come, don't clean up and then come, come and let him clean you up. The sanctuary is a place of rest. It's a place of refreshment. It's a place of restoration, restoration. That's where you have to come. Green pastures. Verse 9, my dearest one. I love that. My dearest one. This Hebrew word or darling, this Hebrew word is only found 10 times in the Bible and nine of them are here in the Song of Songs. And it's a homonym for that word that means tending the flock. Darling is dearly loved. 
My dearest one, let me tell you how I see you. You got to spend time with the Lord in order for him to tell you this. But I'm going to tell you how he sees you if you are born again. He says, you are so thrilling to me. To gaze upon you is looking at one of Pharaoh's finest horses, a strong regal steed pulling his royal chariot. These are the finest horses that Solomon uh, that, that came to Solomon's temp, uh, stables that were imported from Egypt. And here is the thing. When I was a kid, uh, I was kind of joking about this and just saying, well, my dear, you, you, you know, you're so lovely and, and you thrill me. You look like a horse. <laughs> but the, but the aw awesomeness of the, the Pharaoh's horses strong. She feels weak, but he says, you're strong. You're regal. You're royal. You thrill him. Imagine that you thrill God. Verse 10, he says, your tender cheeks are aglow. Your earrings and gem-laden necklaces set them ablaze. Your cheeks are aglow. I want to read this uh, portion. Uh, out of my Song of Songs book, um, uh, devotional. <clears throat> Pharaoh's finest horses were trained to perfection, to know the slightest touch or command. They knew what the master wanted, and they obeyed. They were the most beautiful, beautiful, desired, well-bred, cherished, cared for, willing horses that ever existed. And this is how God sees you. Let it settle in your spirit. I just feel like you need to settle that in your spirit that you thrill him. I don't feel that I obey God. right. Well, God says that you do. In fact, the adorning that you do in your heart Set your cheeks aglow. And to me, that just says that 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 just says that yeah. It just when somebody when a when a woman's cheeks are glowing, it's awesome. It's just, it makes them more beautiful. And then he says this, and it's very interesting in verse eleven. We will enhance your beauty, and circling you with our golden reins of love, you will be marked with our redeeming grace this this term we it, it points to the triunity of god god the father god the son and god the holy spirit three in one and they all are involved in making you holy and radiant, making his love holy and radiant. They encircle, they encircle you. All three of them encircle you with their golden reins of love. Not of duty, but of love. He says that you will be marked by their redeeming grace. You will be marked by our redeeming grace. Another translation says, with studs of silver. Silver is a symbol of redemption. The price that was paid to set us free. That's how it comes to you. He redeems you. People will look at you in scorn. But we have to come back to where God sees you, how God sees you. Let me tell you how I see you. You are so thrilling to me. Let it sink in. You thrill God. And we'll get into verse chapter 4 
verse 9 as well, where it says that you leave him breathless. This is such a romantic book. Men don't get it. Don't get me wrong. Men don't get this book a lot of times. They don't understand what it means to be a bride, just the same way a woman doesn't understand what it means to be the firstborn son. The cross was that stud of silver that was planted in Calvary to redeem us from sin, to redeem us from the wiles of the enemy, the wiles of the devil. Yeah, God loves you and he cares about you and he wants more of you. It doesn't matter what your brothers do. It doesn't matter if you are, um, yeah, it doesn't even matter if you are empathetic with other people. Tend your garden, but not only tend your garden, but also understand that he's leading you in the places of love where he leads all his leaders. You're a leader. Anyway, that's all we're going to do today. I want to thank you for joining me. Thank you for being a part of this ministry. Like, comment, subscribe, share these videos with your friends, and let the, and let the Lord just minister life to you. And, uh, and really just go for him. I believe that today you need to come to a place where you see how much God loves you and cares about you. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, I thank you for this moment. I ask you, Holy Spirit, that you would reveal your love for us. The love of the three in one, the love of the Trinity, and how you feel about us today. Thank you for your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a great day, and uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow.